All right, if you're in a rush, here's my thoughts summed up. This is still an excellent laptop. It's got great performance even without a fan. It's got an excellent display, keyboard and trackpad with great battery life at a really good price and it still has years of life left in it. However, thanks to price cuts, the M2 MacBook Air also slings itself into that sub $1,000 pricing category. And while there is still a considerable price gap between the M2 and the M1, the extra features on the M2 might be worth the extra money. But if you want something more in depth, well then that's what this video is about. I've been using this guy since the summer of 2022. I've done a review of this laptop for every year since 2023 and now I'm making one going into 2025. It's like a tradition at this point, but I feel like the Mac landscape has changed quite a bit since my last review, especially considering Apple bumped up all of their laptops to 16 gigs of RAM on all of their base models. So yeah, I'm doing another review, I guess. First off, build quality and hardware. Macs are well known for their good hardware and this thing is no exception, right? All aluminum enclosure and the whole thing just feels well built, not flimsy at all compared to other cheap PC laptops. I can lift the lid with one hand and the screen doesn't bend if I grab it by the corner and adjust the angle and the keyboard doesn't have horrendous deck flicks because of the aluminum enclosure. It doesn't feel like it's sinking unless I put an unrealistic amount of pressure. I mean, you're not ever gonna be pushing down this hard on the keyboard while you're typing. So it's a nice feeling laptop. But is it durable? It's held up really well in terms of durability throughout the years. Now that doesn't mean you should go around checking it everywhere though. It's still a computer, it's still fragile. All the other damage on this computer is purely cosmetic and it's just regular wear and tear you'd expect on the computer. This stain was from when I splashed chemicals near this laptop. These marks are from when I dropped a mug on it. Small scratches on the screen. It's all inevitable. There's gonna be wear and tear after you have a computer for around two years. And there's also marks on the screen because my finger and palm oils go on the keyboard and palm rests. Then when I close my laptop, these oils transfer to the screen. If you want to avoid this, clean your laptop frequently. The only complaint I have with the durability of this guy is the keyboard's plastic. Apple used a type of plastic that wears down when it comes in contact with finger oils for too long, so it probably wasn't the best idea to use this type of plastic on a keyboard because after only a few weeks of use, my keyboard was already showing signs of wear, and now two years later, you can tell which keys are my most frequently used. This is more of a cosmetic problem than anything, it doesn't affect how I actually use the keyboard, but it's disappointing that Apple didn't use better plastic with their keyboards to avoid this issue. And this seems to be a problem with MacBooks in general too. Other than that though, the quality of the hardware is solid and it hasn't really caused any trouble. The design of this laptop is excellent too. It is a six year old design at this point since the 2020 MacBook Air reuses the 2018 MacBook Air's design, but it still has that iconic wedge shape that's been present since the first MacBook Air. The new MacBook Airs don't have that, so that's something to consider I guess. One last note, I just love the space gray color. It's like, well, a spaceship. But you can't spot the difference here. Moving on to the keyboard, this guy is excellent. I've never had any major issues with the keyboard reliability and there's no problems with it even after two years, other than the issue with the keys becoming very shiny over time. I like it quite a bit. The keys are tactile and very clicky. It's not really mushy at all and I really like the key travel. Also, I eat around the keyboard sometimes. I know you shouldn't, but sometimes my big back can't resist and crumbs have gone into the keyboard and it still runs fine. Of course, you shouldn't be eating around the keyboard. You don't want crumbs and stuff getting in between keycaps, but yeah. I find this keyboard to be very comfortable for typing for long periods of time. I have used it to write essays, basically every single script for these YouTube videos since 2022. Also, it's backlit so you can use it in the dark. So if you're crying at 3 a.m. because you regret procrastinating your homework, well, at least you can still see your keyboard. And I know there's gonna be someone asking for this. So here's a sound test. I'm, I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT. Overall, the keyboard's great. No complaints other than the keycaps wearing down, but that's more of a cosmetic issue than anything, and it doesn't affect the keyboard's actual usage. The Mac is well known for having a world-class trackpad, and this MacBook is no exception. The Apple engineers did such a good job at making a trackpad I can't stop touching. If you've never used the Mac trackpad before, let me explain. It doesn't actually click like a normal trackpad per se. Rather, there's a haptic motor underneath it, so when you press on the pressure sensitive surface, it returns a haptic feedback to fake a click, I guess. But this has a couple of benefits. One, the click feels the same no matter where you click on the trackpad, and two, you can customize the feel of the trackpad to however you like. Want it to have a firmer click, a quieter click? You can do that. And there's also this thing called force touch, where after clicking, if you press down really hard on the trackpad, the trackpad clicks again. 
You can use this to fast forward videos to find words. It's pretty neat to have. But yeah, trackpad's really nice. It's a big matte glass surface. And again, the matte finish is starting to wear out quite a bit because of my finger oils. But I feel like this is normal wear and tear you'd get on any laptop after over two years of use. So overall, it's a great trackpad, big, customizable, well-made, and I love touching it. All right, time to talk about them ports. This is one of the bigger downsides of the laptop, I think. You just get two USB-C ports on the left side and one headphone jack on the right side. Now that I think about it, it's kind of funny that the only remaining Apple product with a headphone jack is the one that's the least portable. Like imagine watching someone jamming out on tunes while walking on their Mac. Anyways, the new MacBook Airs honestly aren't much better. They just have an extra MagSafe port. But having MagSafe in itself is a pretty big benefit since if someone trips over a MagSafe cable, the laptop is safe. But if someone trips over this laptop, well, it's a lot harder to yank this charger, so it would probably be catastrophic. But yeah, any other budget Windows laptop, heck, any other laptop, period, is probably going to have a better port selection than this Mac. If you want to plug in standard USB-A drives, or use HDMI, or use an SD card, then you're going to need to buy a dongle. I've bought three of them over the years, and I linked a pretty decent one, an Anchor dongle, in the description and comments below through an affiliate link. So if you want to buy one, it's right there. But yeah, not a lot of ports on this guy. That's one of the downsides. Moving on to the display, this is a 13.3 inch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and it's really nice to look at and it's comparable to the MacBook screens even today. It's a really sharp screen and I can't see the individual pixels when it's at like a normal viewing distance. It's, it's great, wonderful screen. And the colors are really nice too, grays are gray, whites are white, and everything is very sharp, bright and vibrant. It also has true tone which adjusts the white balance of the display to match the lighting condition you're in and it's pretty nice to have honestly. Viewing angles are nice too, as you can see. As for the brightness, for indoor use, it's great, but outdoors, I do wish it was a bit brighter than it is in the direct sunlight. As for connecting external monitors, the M1 Max can only support one external display with up to 6K resolution at 60 Hertz. That's not an issue for me since I use a 1080p 75 Hertz monitor, and most people aren't getting an M1 MacBook Air to use with a multi-monitor setup, so it shouldn't be an issue for most people. But if you wanted to have a cool monitor setup like this guy, sorry but you can't. Overall, this display is definitely wonderful, and while it's not the super smooth 120Hz on the MacBook Pros, the animations in macOS are really smooth, and it doesn't feel like 60Hz, it feels quite a bit smoother, and why do you need 120Hz anyways? It's not like you'll be gaming on this thing. <laughs> or will you? We'll get back to that soon. But first let's talk about the speakers, camera, and microphone. Speakers are solid, definitely better than you'd expect from a laptop this size, they get pretty loud, and they sound really nice too. I use them to listen to music and stuff. Great for everyday use, but you know what isn't great for everyday use? The camera. Even in 2020, when we were in the era of COVID, this wasn't really cutting edge, and it certainly hasn't aged well over four years later. Damn, it's been four years? It'll suffice for the occasional video call and FaceTime. The microphone on this guy, however, is pretty darn good. Also, fun fact, the microphone is embedded right here in the speaker grill. Pretty cool, huh? Moving on to the battery life. It's been good, but not as god tier as it used to be. I still don't really have to think about bringing a charger when I go to class with this thing, and generally it can last a full day of on and off light use. Of course, it's going to vary depending on what you use your Mac for. If you're playing games, it's going to drain a lot faster than if you were just doing some word processing. It's definitely not as good as it used to be when I got it new, but that's just the nature of lithium ion batteries. Any lithium ion battery is going to degrade eventually. Mine is at 82% of the original health after two and a half years, which isn't too bad. And again, it's still capable of getting me through the day. I do notice it draining faster though than when it was new. So battery life is something you'll have to look out for if you're looking to go down the use route. Even if you do run out of battery though, the charger the Mac comes with is a small 30 watt power brick. And the Apple one is already really small, but you can get even smaller ones like this Anchor power brick, which I've also linked below. It's 30 watts and can charge a bunch of different devices, not just the M1 MacBook Air. Anchor isn't paying me to say this by the way, I just really like their charger. But yeah, overall great battery life in the MacBook Air M1, but do keep an eye out for battery health if you're buying used. Performance on this Mac has aged like fine wine. This thing has the M1 chip with 8 CPU cores and 7 GPU cores. I also spec the thing up to 16 gigs of RAM. It doesn't feel slower than the day I got it. It still barely runs warm. I have a bad habit of keeping lots of Chrome tabs open. At one point I had like 60 and this thing still handles them fine. So daily tasks, this guy crushes like no problem. Word processing, YouTube, all that stuff runs great. And it runs at a pretty low temperature. It's still mind blowing how I can have so much stuff open 
and the machine runs really cool even without a fan. Yep, this guy has no fan, so you won't hear it ramping up. This means it might struggle to run heavier tasks for longer periods of time though. So how does this Mac run those heavier tasks? There are three things that I regularly do on this Mac that I consider performance heavy. The first is video editing, editing all these YouTube videos, of course. The second one is running a Windows virtual machine. I need a software program for one of my classes that runs only on Windows, so I need to emulate it using VMware within Mac OS. The third is running games, primarily Roblox and Minecraft. All right, so video editing isn't too bad. I just edit 1080p videos and it's been able to handle timelines with minimal lag and export times are pretty good considering the laptop's lack of a fan. It does get really hot when you're rendering though. The CPU approaches 100 degrees Celsius. As for running virtual machines, I feel like the machine does get hotter, but not dangerously hot. It's more warm. And this is running the virtual machine as well as other apps in the background. So again, it handles it quite well. As for gaming, when I play Roblox, the CPU temperature again goes towards 100 degrees Celsius, but I don't think I've noticed any performance drops. Overall, the performance is really solid, especially considering that this Mac is over four years old. For most people, this should be more than enough performance, but we should talk about gaming. If you want a machine primarily to game, you might want to steer clear from Macs in general. Don't buy a Mac for gaming. I just do light gaming like Roblox and Minecraft, but if you're a serious gamer, then you're probably gonna want a Windows PC. It's not really a hardware issue as much as it's a software one. Less games are developed for Mac OS. It's a bit sad. I should also bring up the fact that unlike Windows PCs, you can't upgrade a Mac after you buy it. So if you need more RAM or more storage, you can't swap out the components for better ones, which is kind of a bummer. And also why I recommend getting more RAM because the amount of storage you have can be somewhat remedied with an external storage drive, but you can never add more RAM to increase this laptop's performance. What you buy is what you get. Overall though, despite these downsides, the performance on this Mac is great. And I think it's the least you'll have to worry about for this laptop. Let's talk about the laptop landscape in 2025 though. 2025 is fast approaching. So what happened in the past year that's changed the laptop landscape or specifically the Mac landscape? Well, probably most importantly, Apple's newest Macs released this fall all come with 16 gigs of RAM as the base model, meaning that Apple now themselves think eight gigs of RAM isn't enough going into 2025. Probably has to do with all like the Apple intelligence stuff that they're doing. Is eight gigs usable? Yeah. Definitely, but no doubt a 16 gig laptop is gonna be more powerful and more future-proof than an eight gig version. If you know you're gonna be doing super light tasks, the eight gig should be fine, but upgrading to 16 gigs in my opinion is worth it since you get that extra little wiggle room and mileage that might help expand your laptop's lifespan. And that's the main problem with buying this MacBook for 2025, especially if you're looking for a 16 gig model. Most of the new options come with eight gigs of RAM without a 16 gig option. And if you want 16 gigs of RAM, you'll need to go refurbished or be really lucky. If you can find one on the official Apple refurbished website, then damn, that'd be awesome. But otherwise you'd have to buy from a third party, which is often a gamble and you need to deal with battery degradation. So that's my little spiel on RAM. If you're getting this for your kid, your mom or your grandpa, eight gigs should be more than enough for them to do their everyday tasks like web browsing and stuff. But if you're looking to do anything more performance heavy, I'd consider going for something with 16 gigs of RAM, no matter what model of Mac you choose. Honestly, if you can wait, wait, because Apple seems to be planning to release their M4 MacBook Airs in the spring. And even if you don't plan on buying them, their release will still bump all the prices down a notch. If you really need a laptop now, this thing is still a solo machine, but you'd be better off finding an M2 MacBook Air in most cases, unless that'd be really stretching your budget, which is another reason why I suggest waiting a couple months to see what Apple does, because if the M2 is out of your budget now, the M4's release might just push the price of the M2 further down towards M1 territory. So what does the M2 have that the M1 doesn't? Basically, it has a new design with a notch, a bigger screen, MagSafe, and slightly better performance because of that new M2 chip. If you want a more in-depth comparison of these two Macs, I have a video detailing the differences in the card above. And of course, you can buy both the M1 and the M2 laptops using my affiliate links below. In my opinion, the M1 is like a Toyota Corolla. It suits the everyday person's needs just fine, but if you spend a little more, you might be able to get something like a Toyota Camry, which in this case is the M2 MacBook Air. Everything the everyday person needs with a few extra benefits. But if I had to choose between an M2 with 8 gigs of RAM versus an M1 with 16, I'd go for the M1 with 16. I feel like RAM is definitely a bigger influence on performance than a single chip generation. So let's wrap this video up. Should you buy this Mac in 2025? Well, if you're a kid and you're looking for your first computer, something that won't break the bank, this is probably the best value computer you can get right now for the price point it's currently sitting at. And honestly, 8 gigs of RAM is perfectly fine for most people if you're just running a couple Chrome tabs and schoolwork, word processing, Google Docs, YouTube, all that stuff. If you're going to be doing lots of multitasking or stuff like video editing though, then 16 gigs is the much better option. This is still an excellent base computer that nails all of the essentials and honestly, I'd say it still has a couple more years of life left in it. Apple supports their laptops for a while and you typically get six or seven years of software updates. And even after that, the machines are still very usable. 
Heck, my mom is still using a 2015 MacBook Pro for watching TV shows, so this guy should last you a while. But if your budget allows for it, I'd say try to find a 16 gig M2. And if you can, wait for the M4 MacBook Airs to come out so the prices go down even further. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Consider subscribing if you liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Be awesome and stay techy. Bye. Black outdoors. They're all green. You know, I think I'm a genius. I think green, green. This thing has the M1 chip with eight GPU cores. I don't need my MacBook to record a video anymore. I can connect this dongle to my microphone. Interesting how the light looks purple, even though the wallpaper is like green. Cool, and the light is recording a video, and I need a picture of Alphabet, but then check this out. Wow.